Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego, I suppose. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. Good people of the blue marble that we all share. Welcome in to a new episode. I teased it. I told you it was coming. Today we are talking about the new Corvette that is getting ready to release here in August. So yes, the set we are finally talking about. So here's what you need to know about it. It is just called the Corvette. The Icons Corvette 10321 is the set number. That should be easy. The countdown 321 and go. Has 1210 pieces. It's going to retail for 150 bucks, 150 euros. British pounds is always just a little bit less. If you are a VIP member, by the time you're hearing this, it is probably available. It is available August 1st. Remember, it costs you nothing to be a VIP member, literally nothing. It just gives you an opportunity to save up points to be able to spend on Lego if you're new here. If you're not a VIP member, you have to wait until August 4th, and I guarantee you that it's probably going to be on back order by that point in time. It's a pretty good price point, so we're going to go ahead and get into this. Now, today, it is a little bit of a different episode, and the reason for that is I have a a guest that is joining, and this guest has been on in the past, but it's probably been probably about two years, and the reason is it gives a different opinion and basically completed majority of the build. I mean, I did a little bit, but I should say more than a little bit, but it was a, it was a really cool build and we're going to chat about it together. So I'm going to bring in my secret guest here for you guys. And here we go. So I'm introducing the one and only Finn, the Lego master, maybe not an official Lego master, but Finn, thank you for joining me again. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It's good to be back on. It's good to be back on. Yeah, yeah. It's been a it's been a minute or two. But if you guys are not familiar, you don't know. We did we did a few episodes where we had like five with Finn, and this was a few years ago. Um, for those of you that don't know, Finn is my just about fourteen year old um, son. So we are a giant Lego family. <laughs> At least you and I are. Yeah. Um, the my wife, Mrs. Bricks King, is not at all. <laughs> she would prefer us to just dump all of it, it. Yeah. <laughs> throw it in the trash. Is is her way of it, you know? So, um, Finn, you had an opportunity to build this set. You built a good portion of it. What? Um, t- tell me a little bit about the car that you really like. And we do have it here sitting in the studio. It can be a convertible. Or it can be a hard top. Does come with two different license plates, one for California and one for Michigan. And they are stickers, obviously, of course. But there are a number of new printed pieces, obviously, specifically for this. So Finn, let's let's hear about this. Give us all the details. So one of them I'd like to point out is how the trunk opens up from the back. There's a little mechanism that pushes it up. It's really cool because you don't manually do it. And I also like the um, the trunk, how the engine stuff is in it, and it looks really cool from the design angle. So you talk about the functionality here, and I'm going to grab it. The door is open on this thing, guys. It is just like an Icon's standard car. So the front of this thing, the front hood opens up. You get a really cool looking engine that is in here. You do have some... Corvette tiles that are in here. They are stickers, unfortunately, but you see the um, the distributor cap up here. I think it's called distributor cap. I cannot re- recall anymore, but you get this old style engine that is in here. And then in the interior of that, you have the ability to be able to use the steering wheel so you can see all the gearing mechanisms in there. Finn, what did you think about the, uh, the, the obviously you've, you've built a number of the icons cars before they changed the icons. They were creator expert. What what did you think about the uh, steering mechanism and stuff like that? Was it did you find it difficult? Did you find it easier or kind of fair? You know, what were your thoughts? 
So I found it interesting on how the design of it worked. It wasn't like my other one. I think I have another Mustang. And it's different in the way that it is a different mechanism. It's a bit easier to put together than um, other typical ones. But I found that interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's really fascinating in the way that it is done. I love the ability that you can actually see what is going on there. As I had mentioned about the steering mechanism, it does have a steering wheel that does turn in the cockpit. Again, a sticker on the steering wheel, which really sucks. I was hoping that it would not be. And, you know, those stickers are always a pain in the butt. But, yeah, I mean, your placement has been impeccable. I got to admit, your stickers are really well done. Well, thank you. So you do have three pedals in here. You have a clutch, you have a accelerator, and you have a brake pedal that is in here. So that is nice. It's a nice little detail that they added and they kind of used the uh, fairly new within the last few years, the one by one round tile that has the little miniature bar, if you will, sticking out the top of it. There is a little gear shift that is on the inside. You do have a sticker here on a one by two tile that uh, shows your stick pattern in there. For those of you that know about sticks or don't know, you are missing out because driving sticks is phenomenal. I love driving stick shifts. They're perfect. Anyway, so some other little things that are in the, uh, in the compartment for your drivers or whatever, what kind of, what kind of mini fig? Well, obviously not a fig, a mini fig, but what, what kind of, I mean, the pedals and the steering wheel are there, but there's no way to get legs around the steering wheel. Let's say you wanted to build a, some kind of Lego figure to fit in there. I mean, do you really think it's going to fit? No, no, you have to have some thin legs. No, you've got to have some super. Yeah. <laughs> you better be working out at the gym in a different way. So what did, what, what would you say as far as the interior fan was one of your favorite parts? Uh, the seats, the seat builds are really nice yet again, and they do actually move forward so that you, I mean, there's really nothing to get to, but that's really neat. Up to this point in the in the cockpit area, the wherever your people are sitting, yeah. passenger compartment. What did what did you like about that? I really loved all the tiny detail about the driver's side and a bit of the passengers with the handlebar. The handlebar, the oh crap bar to a certain degree. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I definitely can see that. The doors are really well done. They are a lot thicker than what I thought. What are, what are your thoughts on the doors? Did you, did you find it difficult at all? I mean, they seem pretty standard. Like there's no real crazy feature to them. Yeah, I, from past experience, I think they um, open a bit farther than other ones, but they're pretty cool to build. Yeah, they do. They open the whole way. You could actually ding the front end of your car <laughs> on the side. Um, there are some tiles that are on here, guys. There are some two by tiles and then there's some one by tiles that just have the silver line that is printed along them. And the same with, um, the seats as well, just behind the seats on the, the rear deck. I love the color scheme of this Finn. the white that is kind of interlaced here with the red, um, how, how did, how did the design team go? I mean, you had a, a much thorough, look at this than I did beforehand. What did you think about how they kind of tiered the white, which is a little, um, I guess, indented, if you will, compared to the red? What what did you, did you find it difficult at all? Did you find it unique? I mean, I found you, it unique and a bit difficult because it was in a different layer, if you would call it that. And then some of the white also pops out. I found it really interesting. So you had mentioned, we had a discussion about it, the different kind of techniques. You you had mentioned like there's some kind of unique techniques in here. What is something that you came across? You're like, I, I kind of like the way that was done, whether it's new or old to you or to somebody else. What What is something that you thought about? It? Like, oh, that was really neat. I actually found the front bumpers and the back bumpers with the banana. That was really cool to me. So we didn't get to that yet, but we will here. So in the front of this thing, you do have a printed tile, a big old tile here that it has the Corvette uh, logo and as well as the word Corvette printed. And then just below that, you have these tiered, I guess the tiered grill that is in there. It's a really unique way that they did it. I thought at first these pieces here, the little pantograph pieces. Yeah. 
I thought they were hot dogs originally that they were using. Yeah, they look like they, hot dogs. Yeah, at first, and then you're, you're like, oh, no, it's not. But they used some wheel wells to capture part of the bumper as well. And then, of course, they used the hot dogs down below that. But you had mentioned the bananas that sweep from the front along the sides. It's a, I mean, it's a perfect part. I mean, you don't have to look at it as a banana. Yeah. Um. But really well done. The front end looks really, really sharp. It looks very, very close, if not identical to the actual model of the original vehicle. I concur. You concur? Good word use. <laughs> <laughs> so the the windshield of this thing actually does come off pretty easily. It is nicely tiered in the way that it or uh, tilted backwards. And I'll talk about... If, if you're a box keeper, you're somebody who likes to keep a box, we'll talk about that because there is a specific reason to be able to keep the box here. So we're going to move towards the rear here. You had mentioned that there is a function here for the rear. Yes. So it's like right by the back left tire, like right underneath the hood. You push it up and then you put pull the hood up. I find that really interesting since the, the trunk blends in really well with the back so you can't really manually push it pull it up whatever like in the front yeah yeah so you had mentioned you can go ahead and leave it open okay so we've got it here obviously in the studio and we're just messing about with it so there is a sticker that is on that back deck lid which that sucks i hate having stickers it is what it is so what is down on the inside of here uh, not a whole lot. It's just the opening mechanism, just in storage. Exactly. Just the opening mechanism, just some storage, nothing special that is in there. It's kind of disappointing because it's just a lot of empty space. Obviously you could do something with this space. I don't know what I would have. I don't know what they, I would have taken a suitcase or something, you know? Yeah. Or I don't know, a, a racing helmet. I don't know that they're not racing it, but something, throw something in there. Yeah, I like it empty. <laughs> you like it empty? Okay, yeah. differing opinions. That's all that matters. So you had mentioned that you can pop the pop the trunk, as they would say, and it actually does move. It does come up, and you can actually tilt this thing the way that it is in a Technic mechanism that is moving there. Um, the mechanism he is talking about under the tire, or I shouldn't say under the tire, but or near the rear left tire, um, and being able to pop this thing open bananas in the back again, you know, the car is going bananas. I am a big fan of the way the rear taillights were done. Yeah. I found that really cool because I don't see a whole lot of those pieces. Yeah. I would agree as far as the, uh, the rear taillights there, usually you see plates or some kind of tiling or something. Yeah. Um, but you do have the license plate that is back here that just says Corvette on it. Um, with the, uh, Corvette license or logo. <laughs> license, the logo with the little crossed racing flags there. So uh, really nice. The only thing on this towards the rear of it that kind of made me shiver and discontent was the way that the sloping is done around the backside of the rear tires. It just, it feels a little too close. The, the roundness isn't quite there like it is in the front. And obviously pieces are, you know, you only have so many different choices yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts about that? I did not like that part. It it didn't sit well with me. I like the design. I do not like the outcome. The outcome, just specifically around that? Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this thing does come with a hard top as well. And all you have to do with the hard top, it, it just literally pops on. There's nothing that you have to do. It's pre-built and you pop it on and then you have a hard top immediately and it's ready to go. So you can display it however you like. Are you a fan of the hard top or the convertible? Convertible. Yeah, I would agree. I think the convertible goes much better um, than the hard top, without a doubt. So talking about pricing, 150 bucks. it is well within where it should be for the pieces that you get. Um, you get some unique prints specifically to this. I forgot to mention the um, the rims are printed here. It has that little plate that slides on. And so you have that. What is something you would have liked to seen or you would have liked to see in this car? It could have been anything. Like maybe something different added to it, a different idea to it. What is something you would like to see different? 
Like you said earlier, I would have liked something in the trunk, but I also like it empty. Like, I don't know, nitrous or something. <laughs> nitrous. I think some of the pure car purists out there are probably going to jump through the this, this speaker right now and punch you in the face. I don't think they're very happy taking a classic car and putting nitrous in it. Yeah, why not? No, somebody maybe somewhere. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't really have any major complaints other than the rear wheel wells that we had talked about that just the execution just didn't come across the same way. Yeah. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's just definitely not perfect. It's not perfect. Um, I love the, the front, uh, the front hood, how it opens. You just pinch and lift, get to see a really neat done engine in there. My favorite part about this has to be the, uh, the driver's seat and the pedals there, the the stick shift that is in there with the uh, the gearing pattern I love the way that is done. What is something that you uh, liked best of this build? I like the Technic part of the engine the most. I'm I'm probably out alone here, but I like that <laughs> part. You would be surprised how many people are with you. Like, oh, Technic, yeah, I totally love Technic, and then the rest of us just look at you like Freak. you're broken. Yeah, <laughs> no, something. So before we wrap this thing up, is there anything that you came across and you're like, you know, I, I, I for, totally forgot to mention this in the, in the pro- process of us chatting uh, something, anything that, you know. So the front lights, I like how there's actually two instead of just like one on each side. I found that really cool, in my opinion. So two pieces? Two lights on each side, yes. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I thought originally you were talking about the um, <laughs> the pieces that were used here. I was like, yes, those absolutely. But you're right. The the dual headlights on each side. That's that's always uh, unique. I do. I've been messing about with this uh, antenna, the jousting piece. Yeah, that it makes up the antenna. And the reason I had it off is this. So I told you guys, if you're box keepers. Box keepers, if, if you don't know what I'm referring to, is those people that like to keep a box for just about every Lego set or something that's more iconic like this. You know, people do it with the Christmas Village stuff or whatever. The cool thing about it is if you're keeping the box, you can take off the front windshield, you can take off the antenna, and you can take off the rear windshield with the hard top and put the car along with those pieces in the box and everything fits. So you build it if you don't want to display it, or let's say you display it for a little bit and you choose, you know what? I really don't want to do this anymore. I want to cycle out my collection. You can toss it in the box. You don't have to seal it back up, but toss it in a box, place it, store it, and it's done. So I, I don't know if that was a consideration when Lego chose their box type size, I'm okay with that. I don't know what your thoughts are. I'm usually, I'm not a box keeper. Very, very rarely do I keep boxes, but this, this is a perfect solution instead of being like, now what do I do with it? I'm sliding back in the box. So what are your thoughts on that? I think it's a cool coincidence, whether it's on purpose or not, but I like that. It's a good thing. Coincidence. That's a, that's a good thing to call it right there. You nailed it on the head, like (laughs) hammer, nail, got it. So overall, if you had to give this thing a score, let, let's just say I hate, I hate doing out of 10, but when reports get submitted, if you guys, some of you have an idea of what I'm referring to. So whenever something comes from Lego and it comes into the studio and we do, we build it, we talk about it, we put all our plans together on how, how I'm going to discuss it and stuff. Afterwards, I have to give a report back. I have to give so many different things back to Lego so that they can hand it off to the design team, the marketing team, whatever. And they look at all that. So when I say, Hey, you know, let you know, or tell me what you think, send me an email on social media, comment, whatever. I put that in there and it goes back to them, whether you like it or you hate it, it doesn't really matter. And even though I don't like a score one out of 10 or zero out of 10, it is what they use for their scoring. I've only ever given one build ever a 10 out of 10, most of the time it's between seven and nine, unless it's really, really bad. Then I don't go below five. Yeah. Which again, that's really rare. So out of 10, where did, where do you put this? I would say I'm not a big car enthusiast. I'm going to say eight. Now you don't have to say you could you could say eight if you want to, where, where do you put it? 
I would put it around nine because I really like Lego cars in this design. So nine out of ten, you're you're basically reporting back and you're saying, oh, yeah, without a doubt, like nine out of ten because it's like the bomb or is it is there you had mentioned you like Lego, uh, the Lego vehicles. Is it more so that it's a Lego vehicle or is it something that really kind of captured you when you were going through the build and then after that, the the end result, what gives it that solid nine out of 10, that 90%. Okay. A little bit of it is because I love cars, but I really like the design of it and how it's really unique compared to other ones in that sense. It is unique. I would, I would agree with you there. Like I said, I'm going eight out of 10. I think the wheel well is really sucking some love out of it for me. I'm not a big car enthusiast, I definitely, you know, the trunk is definitely kicking me in the face. I definitely feel like there should have been something else. Give me another, you know, 200 parts and throw it. Not, probably not even that another hundred and throw in some kind of little tiny build instead of giving me two license plates to be able to switch. One of which, like I said, is California. One is Michigan. So Finn, anything else before we get out of here that you wanted to mention about the car? Good, bad, ugly, Things you would have liked to seen. I think that's it. A man of many words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So again, this thing will be available August 1st for those of you that are VIP members. August 4th for everybody else. Again, 150 bucks. If you are interested in this, make sure you go and get it as soon as you can, whether it be in the Lego store or online, because I have a feeling this thing is going to go uh, super fast off of shelves and go back order stock pretty, pretty quick. So that's going to wrap it up from my guest, Finn. Finn, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And um, I'll talk to you guys here soon. We do have some more Brookwell Chicago interviews, like I said, and we've got some other really cool things coming your way, including the new Batman Batcave, which is a uh, project undertaking that is absolutely insane. So until we meet again, I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. <laughs>